Welcome YouTube friends and family to today's edition of the Wellness Homesteader. So even though it's Throwback Thursday, we're not going to do some Throwback Thursday activities this week because it's time to start planning for the best ever 2024. I hope what I'm going to bring you today will be helpful and you'll stay tuned. I have shared in other videos that I love having a robust planner. I've used a planner, mm, gosh, probably since planners came out in <laughs> 30, 40 years. I don't know, long, long time. And before there were planners, I was always a list maker and I still am. So last year I shared with you my particular planner. Now, this um, is a, called a Law of Attraction Planner. And I'm, I'm just going to tell you all, I'm not into the manifesting um, point of view. That does not resonate with me. It's not meant to be critical of anyone who it does resonate with. The reason I still choose this planner, and I've ordered one for 2024, is because it has an excellent section in the front. Now, um, there are some things in here that I, I really like around the idea of law of attraction. Keep your thoughts positive because your thoughts become your words. Um, keep your words positive because your words become your behavior. Keep your behavior positive because behavior becomes habits. Keep habits habits positive because habits become your values. Keep your values positive because your values become your destiny. And, and that was Mahatma Gandhi, or Gandhi is the one who actually um, is the author of that thought. So there is a whole roadmap in the front of these planners. And guys, I will link the one that I got for this year, which I'll be showing you down in the description box below if you have interest. Um, what I really like about it is it helps you become more self-aware and it also has helped me stay very focused and not make my goals too vague or so big that they're unachievable. So what have I done really well with? Well, I achieved quite a few of my goals and I'm going to share a few with you. Some are too personal and I don't want to, to share them because it's not relative, but I'm just going to hold this up real quick. So it is about, for me, it's about creating goals, not just, you know, what are the two most common New Year's resolutions? And we're going to talk about resolutions versus goals. I want to lose weight and I want to save more money which might have been in mine, but in a little more specific. But we're more than our body or our pocketbook. We have spiritual needs. We have personal growth needs, which doesn't have to do with your appearance. We have family. We have relationships. We do have money. We may have some recreational or fun goals. And if you're still working or, or you're a YouTuber, you may have career and business goals. So... What did I do well with and what didn't I do well with? Well, um, I partially achieved my weight loss goal. Not there yet. I will finish reading the entirety of the Bible before the end of the year. I'm in Revelation. <clears throat> I have about three days left on my reading. Pardon me. Um, I achieved my goal of having 5,000 subscribers. I actually surpassed that. So while a lot of these are really good, what I want to encourage you to do if you set goals for last year is go back through and say, okay, what did I do well with and what did I fail to do? And then the key is why did you fail to do it? Did you fail to do it because it was an unreachable or an unrealistic goal in the time frame you had to do it? Did you simply forget about it? 
Are there things that happened that were totally beyond your control? One of my goals under family was to find uh, a nursing home for mom. That was a higher level of care because I could see that coming. Well, I didn't achieve that goal because my mom passed away. And so that was like a not, not needed thing. But there are other uh, things that, that I maybe put down here that weren't unachievable. It's simply, I didn't go back and review my goals and I kind of forgot about it. And while this was at times a very difficult year for me, um, I can see looking back that I simply didn't focus on it or my focus was so honed to certain things that I decided that it wasn't important. And sometimes our goals change. So one of the things I wanna really encourage you to do if you want to set 2024 goals and you do use a to-do list or a planner or put it in your phone as a reminder, once a month, go back and review your goals and say, am I on track? Yes or no. What's stopping me? Is this unrealistic? Is it no longer pertinent to what I want to do? Um, what are other things that kind of keep us from having our achieving our goals? Uh, are we too focused on another area? So those are some of the things that you can do and then set and realign. One thing I really like about this planner is, and you can see I don't always use it, um, is there is a goal of the week. So what do I need to really focus on this week? And what are my top priorities? What is just a priority? And what could I delegate? And guys, I Frankie's not very good. <laughs> receiving things to do. You know, I don't have a lot that I can delegate. Basically, for me, it amounts to what can I hire done if I can't get it done myself. And, and this I actually achieved, so I was pretty glad. This has to do with um, outside work and such. So, what if you just want to use plain paper, guys, that's fine too. What I really suggest that you do is you do set priorities for your week that tie back to your goals. And don't be afraid if a goal is unrealistic or no longer adding value to your life, let it go, make a different goal um, or cross it off in its entirety. So I also like to pick a theme word for the year. And guys, this is totally optional, but this year I, did, I didn't for 2023 pick a theme word. Um, I did good to get my planning done. <laughs> you know, if y'all think back to what was going on with my mom, if you've been around for a while, it, it was an unusual first half of the year. First six months of the year, my life felt like it wasn't my own many, many days because of my mom's needs. And I'm not bitter or resentful about it. It's just the way it is, right? So I was thinking about what do I want my theme word to be this year? Because I've done a lot of different ones like growth and um, frugality and, you know, just all kinds of things. But my word this year, and y'all feel, feel free to steal it if, it if it's relevant for you, is joy. Joy. <sighs> There's been a lot of sadness this year. <clears throat> Shoot, take it, guys. Can I ever get through a video without crying? Well, I can. <laughs> I think it's very easy when you've had some major death in the family or some major event crisis to roll everything into, wow, this year was horrible. And the truth of the matter is, this year was not horrible. But the truth of the matter is, I have more opportunity and less responsibility than I did in 2023 because I'm no longer caring for my mother. So I want to look for opportunities to add joy to my life, to recognize uh, things that bring me joy and to strengthen those things, whether it is friendships, whether it's animals, whether it's garden expansion, um, whether it's giving a gift of time to help someone else, whatever brings me joy, 
that is going to be a focus. And I'm going to identify under those areas I shared ways that I can add some moments of joy to my life and be happy about it. All right. So pick your theme work. Now, y'all, I apologize. I'm, I'm going to tell you this because you're going to you're going to know if I have to stand up for any reason. I, you know you're old when you hurt your back while you're sleeping. <laughs> Did I turn over wrong? Y'all, I don't know. I don't know. I, I think I'm having a little bit of a lupus flare, just to be honest with you. My hands were extremely, and the hiccups too, uh, extremely swollen this morning. But they're going down. But yeah, my back's pretty sore. That's why we're having a chitty chatty video today instead of me doing something. All right. Um, I'm going to actually reposition myself, take a little break here. Just be a second for you. And I want you to think about what is the difference between setting New Year's resolutions and setting goals. And I'll be back in just a minute and we'll talk more about that. All right, y'all. When you think about New Year's resolutions, a resolution is really focused on a starting point. So maybe your start point, and I'm just going to use myself as an example. Maybe my start point is I want to lose the remainder of my extra chubbiness. <laughs> so to do that, I'm going to have to follow my special diet and I need to increase my exercise because in the winter here, it's very hard for me to get enough cardio to really make a difference. Summer, I walk, you know, I'm fine, but, um, so I'm resolving to leave behind my chubby body and hopefully have a more fit and healthier body. That's why I think so many times resolutions don't hold water for the year or we're not successful because it's where you start. It's not, it, it might be a lofty goal, but it's not what you need to do to get there specifically. Now, when you think about a goal, a goal is I want to weigh 125 pounds again. You hear me, Lord? And th that's the end point. And I'm going to do this, 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 and this to get at 125. So I'm not saying resolutions are bad. Sometimes those big lofty ideas, you just need to break them down as to how am I going to go from where I am right now to where I want to be? What steps do I need to take? So when I look back at my goals, um, and like I said, a lot of these I did very well on. Some of them like were totally, uh, sorry. I'm having trouble finding my goals here. Um, some of them I partially achieved. And then some just, I just, I just didn't do. Um, one of the things I didn't do well was I was going to have a low spend year. Y'all, I'm just here to tell you what a low spend year. Now, why is that? When I was in the thick of the first half of the year, where so much of my time was taken up with my mom, I felt like I did not have the bandwidth to really focus on not spending money. And sometimes it was easier to pay someone to do something or to buy something that helped the convenience and my time crunch than it was to worry about the money. Did I way overspend? Am I in trouble financially? No, I'm not. But it was not a, no, a low spend year. And as I'm sure you all can imagine, I did inherit, um, you know, from my, my mother's estate, I did inherit some money. Have I spent it all? Well, heavens no, <laughs> not yet anyway. But I decided to do some things to improve my environment. Well, here's another area 
that I did nothing. Organize and declutter the entire house. Okay, that's a pretty lofty goal, and we're going to talk a little bit more about that. Um, I did none of that. In fact, I acquired more things when my mom passed. Oh, guys. But I have a more specific plan that I'm going to be following this year that I'm going to bring you along with. I might have to do, like, show you the closets of shame sometimes. <laughs> That's okay. So let's, let me show you the new law of attraction planner that I got. And guys, again, there's nothing magical that tells me I, I had to have this specific planner. It, it is ring bound. I like that better. It's a tiny bit smaller. I found I didn't need all the room. So it comes with a whole bunch of stickers like we're like for shopping lists or books to read my victories things that are urgent um then like dentist appointment and well it looks like coffee is that coffee i think that's coffee some of these oh vacuum yeah okay a stethoscope a pill minder i'd be out of the pill minder things in like a week okay just saying um it also comes with some tabs that you can put right on the edge of your pages. So that is nice. Um, I have not actually broken the seal on this, but I will show you. These are some extra spiral pages that you can put in. Um, you can change out your cover. It comes with three other options. It comes with different back it comes with some affirmations um and then it comes with the actual um dividing tabs and th there's a lot of the um manifestation sayings on those will i use this probably not <laughs> but it, it came with so um it also came with and i'm not going to i might skim it but it comes with eight proven steps to manifesting your dream life. Okay, so why am I kind of talking anti-manifestation? Um, to me, I feel like it leaves the Lord out of the equation and you're relying on yourself. I don't think it has to be that way. I think that's the way this particular company represents it, if that is helpful in you understanding. So, this is much the same as last year's planner. Um, I really like this. Um, skills I want to master. Habits I want to change and learn to achieve my goals. Um, who will keep me accountable? What can I delegate? And then it does have um, daily habits. One year, three year goals, a place for some notes. And then each month has like the month at a glance. I'll be honest, I don't necessarily use the month at a glance. I really like the daily. So you can put your goal and your priorities and today's goals go up here. This has just helped me stay really, really focused in the areas I did do well. And I feel like if I write it down, it helps me be accountable. Did I get it done? Do I need to forward care it if you're a journaler? Um, sometimes I do. You know, yesterday was Christmas. I didn't get a couple things done that were on my to-do list. So I got up and got them done this morning because I had to forward arrow them, right? So this has been super helpful for me. As I said, this year will be a little less busy than... Um, 2023 was very busy and I'm hoping to have more time to work on some of my health goals. Some of my money saving goals will be starting the Three Rivers Challenge next week, guys, on Monday. Wait, is that on Wednesday? Yeah, Monday. So I need to do some meal planning. I'll put that on my to-do list. Um, and I'll, I'll have a separate video for that as well. So I hope this has been kind of helpful for you. 
in setting some goals, in finding what keywords you want to focus on for the year. I recently had my, my family physician retired and I had my visit with him, my very last visit, um, like a week before Christmas. And what was so neat is, you know, he took care of my father who's been gone 13 years. He took care of my mother. I didn't even have a doctor when I developed systemic lupus. He found what was wrong with me, got me right into a rheumatologist to, you know, I feel like he saved my life. And so he's seen all the ups and downs, right, that I've gone through as an individual for the last <laughs> many, many years, right? He's been my doctor about 15 years. And I told him, I said, this is going to be the year of Kim. And it, he was like laughing. He goes, I love that. I think that's like the best goal of ever. And I'm like, well, maybe that should be like my theme. But I really think joy. And what I meant by the year of Kim is I hope I'm not going to have any loved ones that I have to take care of on the daily. I, I'd like a little break from that as much as I love my family and would do whatever is needed. So yeah, this is going to be a good, good year. So stay tuned. I'm going to give you some final thoughts, talk about what's coming up for the remainder of this week. We're almost through 2023, guys, and what you can look forward to in January of 2024. Now I have to get up, so ignore my grunting and groaning. So I wanted to go ahead and share this book with you because I am going to be working on organizing and decluttering through 2024 because y'all... <laughs> It'll probably take me all year to get it done. But I found this book and I absolutely love it. I will link it in the description box. I wanted to share it with you now in case you want to order it with those Amazon gift cards you might have gotten from Christmas. I had to pop off to check a price. Guys, right now today, this is $39. Now I've had this for about three months. So I didn't think I paid that much for it, but perhaps I did. It is made produced by Habit Nest. And what it is, is a way that you can journal your entire house from top to bottom. So um, it talks about understanding your why, the how, what to expect. And then it goes through living rooms, kitchen, bedrooms, clothing and accessories, bathrooms, miscellaneous indoors, garage, everything outdoors. So, um, let's see, let me grab just, <sighs> okay. So it gives you tasks that you can check off. So this is uh, electronics and accessories. It gives you some pro tips. And then it says, task number one, discard. CDs, DVDs, you won't rewatch video games, uh, in process games, you have no interest in finishing. Discs that are too scratched or damaged to use. Broken wires, devices, or consoles. How many of you have like the basket? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do. Of cords and things from all these devices that you've had over the last 15, 20 years as technology has changed. And you're like, I don't, I don't even remember what that was too, but I might need it. So I save it. Yeah. That kind of stuff. Um, charge cords you don't need, remotes you don't need, old phone cases you don't need, um, old devices like, you know, you get a new cell phone. What did you do with your old one? Then it gives you tips for how you can organize it. It talks about your mindset and gives you a place to write notes. And then we'll go on to the next category. And it's done in phases. Now, I may not do this exactly in the order that it's written. Um, I find sometimes what they start with is just too overwhelming for me. Um, whew, yeah, because the I have a lot of books and that's going to be one task for me. And I love my vintage cookbooks and I love my reference books, but guys, I've outgrown my space and I, uh, yeah. So anyway, we'll, we'll start on something that I feel is pretty doable, right? So maybe bathrooms because my bathrooms aren't too bad, but we are going to be working on this throughout the year. It won't be every video, but I will be sharing information. If you don't want to purchase the book, 
I'll, I'll share some content with you that I hope will be helpful to you. So we will also be doing the Three Rivers Challenge. I am trying to set some goals on how I'm going to decrease my food supply and I would like to decrease it. I have a, a percentage in mind of 50%. Actually, I would like my canned goods to be even lower than that because I've expanded my growing space. And aside from the freezer, that is my most at-risk food storage. So I hope you'll find that helpful. I want to thank each and every one of you. I got a lot of lovely Christmas cards, y'all. Thank you so much. My son and I had one of the most amazing Christmases we've ever had. It was just a great time of fellowship and bonding, and it was really nice to have him home when we weren't going to a funeral because we've had a lot of that this year. And we may have some of it next year with his dad's side of the family, but we'll just take that a day at a time for sure. But it was it was really quite lovely. Um, as always, my, my son just thoroughly enjoyed the... Um, Jalapeno eggs were a total hit. He took them all home. He took all the sweets and treats home. And he's like, Mom, I can't eat all this. I'm like, take it into work. <laughs> Get it out of my house. So at any rate, I hope you all have had a very blessed holiday season. Thank you for everything you've done for me in 2023. We will be doing a giveaway after the first of the year. So one day next week, I'm going to make entry very, very simple. I know at least two things. Um, that I want to have as a gift. And guys, it's a nominal value. It's not anything, um, you know, extraordinary. <laughs> Got to stay on that frugal mindset, right? But it's just a way that I can say thank you for being such a valued part of my life. And I've gotten to know a lot of you very, very well. I will see you all on Saturday, Lord willing. I'll be able to walk better by then. Usually um, when I sleep wrong and hurt myself while I'm sleeping, who does that, right? Uh, it's a day or two. So um, I smell menthol fresh. I have biofreezed myself. I've taken an Epsom salts bath and it is just now 6 a.m. So we got a video done too. You all have a blessed and safe rest of the holiday week and I'll see you on Saturday. So until I see you then, be healthy, be well, be blessed and take care.